We all know that Tom Hanks did a lot of running in Forrest Gump, but his steps didn't quite translate into dollar signs like Tom Cruise's do. There are some stars who have found their niche, whether it's pointing, eating, or meeting an untimely end. Let's take a look at actors who have found what they're good at and stuck with it. He might not be the best overall runner, but we did notice that Tom Hanks runs to a particular room in many of his films. <laughs> I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's, that's okay, that doesn't matter. Let's raise a glass to celebrate the extremely talented star Leonardo DiCaprio. Since he apparently loves nothing better than a good toast, he once bluffed his way through a fancy dinner complete with champagne toast in Titanic, and then threw his own champagne-soaked fancy party in The Great Gatsby. Sorry, old sport, I thought you knew. We've seen him hoist his beverage in Django Unchained. And when didn't he have a drink in his hand during Wolf of Wall Street? But at least when we see DiCaprio imbibing in a movie, he's still alive. Because one of his other movie habits is not surviving until the end. He's not quite at Sean Bean's level, but this poor guy doesn't have the best survival rating either. Johnny Depp officially played the role of the Mad Hatter in Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, and while he's certainly not mad in every film, he does tend to wear a hat an awful lot. He wore one more often than not as infamous bank robber John Dillinger in Public Enemies, and as Captain Jack Sparrow in the popular Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Who could forget him wearing Willy Wonka's giant hat in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? It's no secret that hats are also a favorite accessory of Depp's in real life too. He likes them almost as much as he likes making movies with his pal Tim Burton. Brad Pitt spends so much time snacking on the big screen that I have to wonder if he makes liberal use of the craft service table behind the scenes too. He's such a big star at this point that he can pretty much do whatever he wants, even if he wants to continuously shovel food into his mouth. But apparently Pitt is well aware of this quirk, and so is his Once Upon a Time in Hollywood co-star Margot Robbie. Yeah, you haven't seen the footage yourself? I'm a grazer by nature. In addition to his penchant for snacking, he plays a lot of characters who are always on the go and apparently don't have time for a sit-down meal. How'd you know? They say it's rude to point, but when you're as famous as Harrison Ford, the rules simply don't apply, especially when the camera's rolling. Even talk show host Conan O'Brien couldn't resist pointing out huh, this particular trait. He said, you have a particular acting technique. You point a lot. From researching planet Earth as the famous Indiana Jones to making the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs in Star Wars, Ford just can't find a better way to get his point across. No, that's not it. Some folks complain that there's not enough strong female characters in TV shows and movies, but maybe that's just because Michelle Rodriguez has taken all those roles for herself. I'm on it. She almost always plays a tough-as-nails woman who loves wearing tank tops and is not shy about fighting, whether she's in the Fast and Furious franchise, the Resident Evil movie, or Girl Fight, just to name a few. According to Rodriguez, this casting choice isn't just a coincidence. This star admits to loving action and thinks more female characters need to step up and let their fists do the talking. You might be tempted to dismiss the fact that Tom Cruise is always running with the excuse that he's in a lot of action movies, and those tend to be pretty fast-paced. But Rotten Tomatoes actually did the math on this one, and the more this star runs, the more his projects earn at the box office. No, really, this guy runs like a pro with his eyes straight ahead, elbows sharp, and his posture on point. He did not break into a sprint for less successful movies like Valkyrie, Lions for Lambs, or Tropic Thunder. Some of his biggest blockbusters have been the Mission Impossible movies, where there's just no holding him back. But on movies where he picked up the pace, like Interview with a Vampire or Risky Business, the ratings improved. John, don't run. No, 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 no. Not running is not an option for Tom Cruise or the savvy studios who employ him. Sean Bean is an amazing actor who just can't seem to make it to the credits most of the time. Seriously, the moment he shows up in a movie, we know not to get attached to his character, even if that's easier said than done. This actor is well aware of his talent for perishing on camera, but he says that it has to do with the kind of characters he tends to play, and not on his particular skill set. He said, I used to play, and I still do play a lot of bad guys, villains, and psychopaths. In fact, Bean admitted that he's actually turned down roles where he knew his character wasn't going to live a long and happy life. I'm dying. I'm dying. Ah. They say to do what you love, and that's definitely something Jay Jackson has taken to heart. He's known for playing a newscaster, and that's pretty much it. According to Jackson, he's not typecast. This is just what he knows how to do. Whether he's on Parks and Recreation as Perd Happily or appearing in films like Fast Five, he started out helping aspiring reporters make their demo reels before he got discovered himself. 
If Michael Sarah's good at one thing, it's pretending to be awkward, and he's definitely good at that. He always seems to end up portraying a likable yet slightly uncomfortable guy who just can't seem to find the right words for certain situations. I gotta pee on her. I mean, I gotta pee. Pee time. And it's possible not all of this was an act, as Michael Sarah has admitted working on movies can be downright weird at times, and sometimes it's less than enjoyable. What's more romantic than holding breaking local noise ordinances? Apparently, anything involving standing in the rain. The right weather can add drama to a scene, something actor John Cusack knows all too well, since he's always caught in the rain for some reason. Seriously? Someone get this guy an umbrella. Forget about the boombox for a second here, because in Say Anything, we also saw Cusack making a phone call in the rain. If only there was some kind of, ah, uh, I don't know, uh, a booth he could have stood in to stay dry? I'm not going to talk about why Adam Sandler only seems to film movies at hot vacation spots nowadays, or the fact that he makes sure to include his friends and family in his movies. No, today, I'm going to point out the fact that Adam Sandler is always wearing clothes that are way too big for him. This may have made sense in Billy Madison, where he's playing a big kid, or Happy Gilmore when he was a hockey fan, but why is his wardrobe stuffed full of huge shirts? In fact, despite having plenty of cash, Sandler is a big fan of oversized clothes in real life as well. There are plenty of tropes in romantic comedies, but one of them Matthew McConaughey has mastered is something he calls the rom-com lean. Why can't he support himself on any of his movie covers? Apparently, it's just the case of studios sticking with what works. Last time we leaned, we made this amount of money, so we came back. But this star says it's all right, all right, all right with him, and the studios must save even more money since they rarely have to buy him shirts to wear. Few actors are as beloved as Tom Hanks, but instead of singing his praises, we want to talk about how often this guy goes to the bathroom on camera. Seeing him use the restroom wasn't the most traumatic part of the Green Mile, but it definitely did not help. He relieved himself in everything from A League of Their Own to Forrest Gump. I know everyone does it, but usually not when the camera's around. Christopher Walken is more like Christopher Danson whenever he appears in a movie. He started out in musical theater when he was a kid, and even took tap dancing lessons and worked as a backup dancer for a cabaret singer. Rather than let his two-step skills go to waste, he started incorporating his moves into his movies. Up, up, up. Owen Wilson's perpetual astonishment in movies is something that we've not only accepted, but come to celebrate over the years. Because I'll give him this. Despite saying, wow, in just about everything he's ever done, he manages to deliver it slightly different each time. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow! Look at that shine! He's like uh, Christian Nairn on Game of Thrones or Vin Diesel mastering I Am Groot in tons of languages and tones. Learning to cry on command is an important part of an actor's skill set, and it's something that Natalie Portman has absolutely mastered at this point. Seriously, she starred in so many different movies and wept in almost as many. It's hard to say who's the better tear spiller, Natalie Portman or her lookalike, Kira Knightley. Sometimes it's nice to see the hero get the girl, but that usually doesn't happen to James Marsden. In fact, this handsome actor always seems to be losing the girl in every movie he's ever been in. The poor guy couldn't even find love in a Nicholas Sparks movie. Although, to be fair, that probably wasn't his most painful on-screen breakup. You wanna get out of my way? I love Jeff Goldblum as much as the next person, but there's no denying that he has a very, um, particular way of speaking. What do I always say? He even uhs and ums when he's laughing, like during this iconic scene in Jurassic Park. <laughs> no matter what, even when he's half man and half fly, he just has to add that little bit of gold bloom flair to his speech, and there's no shortage of fans who love him for it. But for now, I'll settle for this sweet little, uh, <laughs> who's gonna get him first? Like Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter is no stranger to films directed by her now ex-partner, Tim Burton. But whenever she shows up on screen, she brings her unique and eclectic fashion sense along with her. She's always wearing over-the-top, wild clothes, both in real life and on the big screen. This star claims that she puts a lot of thought into her outfits, despite what some fans think about her wardrobe. I'm not going to call out any one specific idiosyncrasy of the late legendary Christopher Lee, because his most impressive trait is just, well, being in every movie. Okay, maybe not all of them, but he was entered into the Guinness Book of World Records in 2007 for appearing in 2044 film and TV movies, and he lived for six movie-making years after that. I've been looking forward to this. 
To put that into perspective, that's over twice as many movies as Keanu Reeves has been in, and most of us consider him to be a busy guy. Wow. Do you think these stars need to branch out and try doing new things in their movies, or should they just stick to what is clearly working for them? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comments section, and don't forget to click subscribe for more videos from us here at Screen Rant. Thanks for watching.